Name's Daryl. I'm a detective. I detect a lot of things. My grandfather always told me, there are three things you never bring to the dinner table. Sex, religion, and politics. Or we're about to hit all three in this episode. I hate politics. It's worse than herpes. A disease that started from a two-party system that doesn't go away no matter how much money you give to a doctor. If you ask me, both parties are full of shit and need a metamucil. That's the pooping powder, kids. And these parties are two flicks of the same coin, and neither are making any sense. How are these puns treat me? Good? No? Fuck you, then. This is where we start. Downtown. Two parties, one cup. Sorry, too many sex references in my head. Both candidates, Democrat and Republican, set up on opposite ends of the city. Alderman Crayer and Mayor Galen. Which one is which? I'll let you figure it out in this case I call Daryl and the Two-Party Murder. Daryl, you baby diamond miner. What are you doing here? I'm following a case you South African colonizer from Denmark. There was a murder last week. I was called into following one of these candidates. Really? Why didn't they call the cops? They don't trust police. They were black? That's very racist to assume. But yes. A reporter began speaking to Mayor Galen on his rally on the lower west side of the city. Mayor, what do you say to many affiliates who have said, this man is a racist, phobic criminal who only cares for himself? Speaking from experience, he does not deserve a penis. How do you reply? It's pretty sexist and misandrist to say who should and shouldn't have a penis. In fact, it's a pretty phobic comment to the trans voters. I believe in an America that loves their neighbor no matter what genitals they hold. Land of the free, home of the gay. Vote Galen today. What the fuck was that? That was the speech of a mayor. This country is fucked. I'm into the east side. On the east side of the city, close to the river, a rally is set for Alderman Crayer. This country needs actual leaders. No more broken promises, no more pyramid schemes that makes you and I slaves to Pharaoh. This country was created by people of color and it will take people of color to keep it standing. I believe in the little guy, the one that doesn't get much notice or appreciation. This country needs you. I can't do this alone. It's not about you or me, it's we. We can make that change as long as you believe like I do. I'm your neighborhood alderman. And I'm running for senator. Thank you. Well, at least it was inspiring. And sadly, this man is a suspect in the case. Daryl, is that you? Carmela Brown. Woman who looks as lovely as her name sounds. Skin like natural caramel. Not that bullshit caramel you get from cheap chocolate candy in the dollar store. She got the moves that'll make you go into a diabetic coma. And I should know, because we dated I didn't think I'd see you again. Likewise. Kind of makes it awkward knowing we've had those fun times. <laughs> you mean the sex? I wasn't going to say it out loud, but yes. Where are you parked these days? I don't have a car. No, I mean, where do you live? Why, you want to visit? What's with all these questions? Last time I checked, we ended on dark terms. Well, we both had some growing up to do. And I've watched you grow up many a night, haven't I? Those are some good Fridays. I assume you got a playboy that's filling your needs. He's an otterman. I'm his campaign manager. Really? He's one of the suspects in the case. Seriously? He's a good man, I swear. Although, we are having a rocky start in our relationship. Thank you, Lord. What? Nothing. He'll be brought in for questioning. Maybe you'd like to meet him before you question him? Maybe. Hey, love. You never told me where you live. I live in a midtown in a brown brick building surrounded by sorrow and landfill of local corporate secretions. Wow, this fume nor thing has really gone to your head. It's not a thing, babe. It's a lifestyle. For a black man? Especially for a black man. Stay safe. One of the hardest things in the world is knowing your ex-lover is happy without you. But then again, their lover could be a murderer. So I win either way. Then again, it could be said that I'd be losing because it turns out as I turn the corner near my office... Hey, Daryl! I'm the target. You're a dead man, Daryl! You hear me? Dead! I know what you're thinking. Daryl, did you shit on yourself? Well, you're wrong. A black man doesn't shit on himself. He already takes too much shit in life to shit on himself. 
Fuck you, it made sense to me. This mini comes around with his crew of clowns trying to keep the circus down. Bars. Putting out the classic yellow tape in a crime scene. Was this connected with the candidates? As I walked back to my office slash apartment, there was a woman standing there. Kinda reminds you of Velma from Scooby-Doo. With a sweater dress. The curves are definitely matching with the glasses. God damn the glasses. My one weakness. You must be Daryl. Do I know you? No. I'm Billy. I'm at the university. I'm practicing in criminology. Um, I'm responding to the ad you had in the online posting about needing a potential secretary. That posting is six months old. Well, it got to my email. I hate to say it, but I don't have the money to hire anyone. Well, I'm willing to work for at least the next three months before graduation as an, as an intern. You don't really don't have to pay me for that. I'm not sure. I ain't hiring people and don't have any. Please, please, Mr. Darrell, I insist. Your reputation has been consistent on campus, and I'd like to get to know you. I mean, I mean get to know your practice. Hmm. And here I thought I had erectile dysfunction. She killed that noise by grabbing me with her soft hands. All right, you're hired. Lovely. And then my landline phone rings. Well, might as well get used to it. Hello? It's for you. Hmm. Speaking. Hello, Detective. This is Reginald Hoodlin the Third. Did you say Reginald Hudlin? Oh, no. Reginald Hoodlin. Good. I don't want to get sued. What? Nothing. What's going on? Well, good sir. I am one of the major sponsors in politics in the area. That being said, I'm still on the fence of what party in this coming election I should sponsor. The debates are coming up, and I have been receiving death threats because I haven't chosen a side yet. Classic America. So you need to help find this individual? So that I don't meet my end, yes. You sound British. Well, I've spent some time in America. I would like to assist in some way, monetarily. So you're a philanthropist. Look here, Reggie. With all respects, I can find this person, but you're forgetting three things. You're a white British male in America. You are five times more safer than I am. That's number one. Number two, of all the detectives in this city, you decide to hire me. A detective of color. A nobody with little resources. And three. I'll give you $100,000. And I need that payment immediately. After giving myself three bell kicks for finally paying off my student loans, I decided to join him at these debates at the convention center. Sweet Jesus. This is the whitest audience. It's like a 90s Abercrombie and Fitch catalog. And the only brother here is a Republican. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are here with both candidates running for Senate tonight. Mayor Galen and Alderman Crayer. We will speak with questions for the Alderman, Mr. Crayer. The job of a senator is set up of amending bills and speaking on behavior of the American people. What qualifications does an Alderman have in this position? Well, you said it yourself, commentator. Speak for the American people. It's what I've been doing for a long time before I was an alderman with my social work, my college leadership, and my time working with inner city youth. And it's what I will continue to do as your senator. Right on, brother. What? Mr. Galen, there are many issues in the city regarding to crime, air quality, the property inflation, and safety of the inner city. Many have discussed the promises that were given were either never followed up or simply thrown away. For your personal leisure time, how can the American people trust in your Senate when there is so much work not to be done? What the American people don't realize is how incredible our team has actually been. If you look at the stats, crime has been down by 20%. That's not a lot, Mr. Mayor. And Alderman's gonna tell me how to do my job? Being mayor shouldn't just be a job, but a privilege. Something I'm sure you know about. (laughs) Uh, Okay, we're going there, huh? It takes years to handle crime rate in streets. When you don't know the American people. The people love me. Gentlemen, I believe there is some questions from the audience. Um, hello? And that mic, okay. Uh, name's Daryl. I'm a detective. I'm going to bypass this boring-ass debate by asking this one question. Do black lives matter? Well, go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Do black lives matter? Um, 
Well, let me be frank. We'll be right back after a commercial break from our sponsors. Oh, thank God. You're lucky, Mr. Mayor. Whatever. Susie? Here. Cigarette. As I walk towards the stage, the mayor is approached by a blonde that closely resembles Anna Nicole Smith, with titties to match. Don't know who she is? Ask your uncle who lived through the 90s. I'm sure he stroked it to her once or twice. That's not a good look for you, Mr. Mayor. <sighs> you have a lot of nerve asking that question. I'm just a citizen of the city. A citizen who could be kicked out on their ass. I know who you are, Daryl. One word from me, and you'll be in a condemned building. Watch yourself, asshole. Hey there. Don't worry about Galen. His bark isn't as bad as his bite. But mine is. Uh, huh? Is he paying you to say that? Everything but the bite part. My card. She pulls a card out of her right titty. Really seductive photo in a lace on a bedspread. It read, and I quote, Susie with the nice boobies. $30 an hour plus medical. So are you trying to invite me to your services? Oh, no. Mr. Galen won't allow me to date Negroes during the election. He's trying to keep a straight profile, but once the race is over, call me. No, this blonde woman did not just use Negro in front of me and got away with it. She's lucky she got a fat booty. Otherwise, I'd be mad at her ass right now. Daryl, I'm glad I caught you. I wanted you to meet my boyfriend and candidate for senator. Mr. Crayer, it's a pleasure to meet you. Oh, no, it's a pleasure to meet you. With your chiseled chin, five o'clock shadow, scruffy voice, and mocha skin, you must be fighting girls off you, huh? Yeah, fighting. Daryl has been saying that you may be a suspect in his case. Am I? Along with Mr. Galen. I'm working with a client who is having threats to her life, and much of the evidence is pointing towards one of you gentlemen. So, you're going to arrest me, Daryl? Put me in handcuffs, throw me against the wall, torture me against my will till I scream of ecstasy? <laughs> the fuck is going on here? He's hilarious, don't you think? Are you falling for this shit? Daryl, I think you're pretty tense. Here, let me rub your shoulders. I'm good, man. I give a good back rub if you just bend over a little bit. I'm good, damn it. No means no. I assure you that our camp is not threatening anyone. But we are loving. <laughs> Catch you later, Daryl. Bye. I know there are brothers in the background going pause, pause, pause. Wait, what the fuck is this background music? Turn that shit off. <sighs> Much better. Let's try this again. I can hear most brothers in the audience screaming pause, pause, pause multiple times. It's clear what this guy is, but you're not getting my black ass canceled. That's for later in this case. And so, the rich white British guy decides to walk up to me. Mr. Darrow, I've made my decision on who to sponsor. What are you doing out in public? I just wanted to declare my sponsorship. You couldn't have done it in the back? Pause. I just wanted to say that Alderman Crayer... Oh! Oh! Uh, Reg Reginald? Oh no. I'm definitely fired. He kept clenching on my sleeves and fell to the ground. I'm still keeping his money though. I ain't giving that shit back. And yet, as I pull my gun out of my jacket trying to search for who did it, I forgot. I'm in a room full of scared white people. <gasps> He's got a gun! <gasps> he shot that man! <gasps> He's black! Uh, someone call the police! Wait, I'm the police! Dude, you're under arrest! Ain't this some shit? To be motherfucking continued. See you next time.